Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ELFM Big Broadcast here in Studio 3 of Chapel FM. My name is Sam Armitage, sat next to me is Toby, and it's the first day of the festival. Chapel FM is good to go. It's a new beginning. We're all here, things are happening. Bit of a change after the last year or so. It is, it is. And coming up today, we've got an hour and a half of just lots of shows talking about their shows. Uh, <laughs> this is it, you know. Well, there's so much stuff, right? The running order is chock full of a variety of shows that are on ELFM that we think you'll enjoy. Some of them new, some of them not. All fantastic. Yes, you're right, Toby. And today, um, I'm very excited just to hear a lot, hear about a lot of shows that I've never really heard of before. We've got some, we got some African, uh, we got an African music show coming up today, which I'm really looking forward to. We got the Delhi, the uh, the classic uh, ELFM show, which I'm very looking forward to hearing from. Of course, we've got the film show as well, which is great because who doesn't like films? Uh, if you if you don't, you're a bit of a wrong one. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> We got our Think Global Act Local show coming up, our uh, new, uh, new climate change show. Uh, and of course, we've got Sports Talk, um, which is interesting for me because I have little to no interest in sport, although I will listen and hopefully I'll get into it. But first of all, we're, gonna, we're not going to hang around here. We're going to get straight into our first feature. We are joined here beside us by John and James, who were... Uh, are the hosts respect, retrospectively of Left of Leeds and Hot Flavours. I think we're going to be starting with James. Am I right? Or are we we'll starting with John? I think we're, we're starting, starting with, John. with John. We're improvising already. Yes. We're, 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 st- not. we're well, already a minute in. We're <laughs> double act. We're double act already. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, this is my friend James Fernie, and he presents Hot Flavours here at ELFM. Yeah, and this is John. <laughs> John Coolen. <laughs> and John is Left of Leeds. How long have you been doing that, John? I've been, uh, well, I first came to uh, Chapel FM about eight or nine years ago to see our daughter, our eldest daughter, who was playing in guitar with associate bands. And at that time, uh, ELFM were looking for volunteers for broadcasters. And I'd never done anything like that before. I'd been a nurse all my life, worked in the NHS, always loved music, and kind of uh, thought, oh, wow, this is a really good opportunity. I've never done anything like this before, but why not just get out of my comfort zone and and, and do it? I didn't know anybody here, but I thought, I'll I'll take a leap of faith, I'll come down and uh, potentially make a fool of myself. And and I probably did. And I um, went on uh, a few training courses on, uh, like, microphone technique and how to use the the desk and things. And I uh, I developed a a programme called uh, Jazz Ghost Leads, which focused on, like, um, local jazz artists and we played music and had interviews and had live bands in and uh, as the years went on and on and on that program became a bit more noisy and a bit more um, a bit more experimental and somebody suggested to me why, why don't you call it left of Leeds a bit left field so I thought oh yeah so I've kind of broadened my horizons from pure jazz into like improvisation and noise and drone music and you know, so I, I always think the kind of music that we play is the kind of music where uh, people have said to me before, I don't think your stereo is working properly. Or is the radio <laughs> tuned in? I said, yes, it is. That's the band. <laughs> um, and we've been putting on live events. And uh, I've been doing that for about eight years now. And it's been a very good opportunity. What cemented it for me, really, was um, this piece of music that I'm uh, intending to play. I uh, went to see uh, this band at Leeds College of Music. That's Leeds Conservatoire now. Um, and uh, I watched the band, and uh, I kind of thought, I really like them. I, re- I, you know, I really like what they do. And I thought, why don't I just walk up to them at the, end of the, at the end of the night and say, would you like to come and play at Chapel FM? And I thought, no, because I don't do that kind of thing. That's a really silly thing to say. They're going to say, no, go away. And uh, I think I'd, I might have had a drink. <laughs> And I kind of walked up to the band at the end of the night and just uh, got up onto the stage and said, uh, hello, I, I present um, a programme at uh, East Leeds FM called Left of Leeds, and you're right up my street. Would you like to come and play for us? And they, and they said, yes. I thought, oh, wow. <laughs> I can do that. I can do that. So uh, I've been doing that ever since, and I've been asking people to come to, to, uh, to play ELFM, and, and they come and they seem to enjoy it. 
And uh, so the piece of music that I've chosen, which means a lot to me for the Left of Leeds programme, is by Raccoon Dog Soup, and it's from their recent EP, and uh, it's called Unhinged. <laughs> So that's party music uh, round at, <laughs> at our house, if you, and you're all invited, of course. Nobody ever comes. <laughs> James, tell us about Hot Flavours. Cheers, John. Um, James Fernie, Macho Hot Flavours has been running six, seven years, I guess, uh, and we offer a broad spectrum, predominantly jazz, but with blues, soul, gospel, anything that feels good, really. Uh, we like to support local talent, singers, musicians, and to that end, we've had live performances upstairs from artists such as the Gene Watson Collective, Marlena Kelly, Steve Crocker. We invite jazz and blues men into the studio and interview them live, supported by favorite tracks of theirs over the years. The show promotes jazz leads and seven arts and then supporting the annual Leeds Jazz Festival, we find ourselves in the fortunate position of being able to attend, record, and interview some of the best acts in the business. Long may that continue. 
Each monthly broadcast also features two poems selected by me and beautifully read by Peter Spafford. For me, this adds another dimension to the show and introduces another voice which changes the tempo and the tension of the show and adds, I think, that wee bit extra class. A fine example of a supporting local talent is highlighted in the historical background to the following song by the wonderful Fuzzy Jones. The track in question is entitled Walking Over and is taken from her marvellous EP, Junk Shop Folk. The story behind the song is this. Fuzzy lived at a time in a flat overlooking Kirkstall Abbey. On the day in question, she was sunbathing in the back garden when a friend commented that the ground she was lying on covered a mass grave, bodies, victims of the Great Plague. Fuzzy wrote the song, Walking Over. And this is well worth a listen, folks. You get the chance. Fuzzy also has a new album released in August entitled Hotel Landifonia, and she's living in France now, for those folks that haven't seen her around for a while. Uh, I'm looking to sample the new album that, in October when we're back on the air. But for now, I'll leave you with a wonderful track from that dream team of Al Jarreau and George Benson from the 2006 album Giving It Up. This is Long Come Tutu. <laughs> You know what makes Hello, my name's Toby, and I'm joined here by Mimi. How are you doing? 
I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent. So we're here to talk about the film show. Um, so I'm going to start with a question. It's a big question. It's quite a generic question. What does cinema mean to you in your life personally? Um, I think it like means like pieces of like film that can like mean something to someone and that can help change someone's life. And in terms of cinema, where do you go? What's your go-to genre of movie? Where, if you're in, you're in bed, you're tired, you've got a snack, what are you going for? Ooh, uh, I'm going to say drama. Drama? Yeah. Are we talking musicals? No, just drama. Just drama? I, li I like musicals, but in this case, drama. In this case, drama. Okay. Now, you are quite big on musicals, right? Yes. And I'm not. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Sell musicals to me. Um, Latinx community struggling to pay rent. Man opens up shop. Hair salon moves. Um, they struggle with heat and power going out. Is that the plot of all of them? No, just this one. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> not all musicals are like that. Only most of them. They'd all... No. <laughs> <laughs> they'd, they'd all be boring if they were all like that. Yeah, um, I agree. Um, I do like a few musicals. For me, cinema means... It's, it's like a shared experience, right? It's something bigger than ourselves. We can enjoy it collectively. We're in a society where everyone... We're all in our own little bubbles. There's something nice about the experience of cinema. Now, without further ado, we're about to talk about cinema... Would you like to introduce what's happening next? Yes, we, are, we now have Jake and his show about film. Take it away, guys. So, hi, I'm James, and today I'm going to be talking to Jake about his film show. So, would you like to tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, um, so my introdu introduction to ELFM uh, kind of pre predates this building um, being renovated. I got involved in a a writing workshop in Seacroft at the Seacroft Library, um, which kind of ex was in the shadow of of the big Tesco, and uh, there I met a few of the deli members, and Peter, who ran the writing group, invited us to do a one-off show uh, where we'd write a piece and couple it with a track and even though I was writing fiction then uh, for some reason I, I was compelled to to write about a film and couple it with the, the track um, that I'm going to play tonight um, so, yeah so I, I think that's kind of I, I, di I didn't and not until this this building was um, opened up that I, I go on, on to do my own show, which I co-host with my friend James, um, who couldn't come tonight. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, I guess, the, uh, the first thing I wrote for, first piece I wrote for radio was about a film. Uh, I, think, I think I kind of, I've always had that kind of obsession with, with films and yeah. writing about them. But, um, yeah. So, yeah, so I wrote about this film, Grey Gardens. Um, Would you like to tell us a little bit about what the film's yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah it's, it's a documentary. Um, it's about um, a mother and a daughter, the aunt and cousin of Jackie Anassis Kennedy. Um, at the start of the film, it shows news clippings, uh, and they, their house had gone into rack and ruin and it was going to be condemned. And Jackie Kennedy came in uh, and uh, she got it to a, a state where it wasn't going to get torn down. And uh, the, the filmmakers, the, the Maisel's brothers, they decided to make this film about them after they um, yeah kind of looking at how how they were living in this house uh, which was still in in such a state um, and it it's it's kind of portraiture it's about the dynamic between these two people and um, their uh, yeah their strange relationship and 
uh, just the house itself is a character as well, and this this grand grand mansion in the Hamptons, just outside New York, and it's uh, it's just fallen to pieces, and the, the the gardens are overgrown, and the the kind of just yeah, it's just these vignettes. Um, mainly the the daughter, little Edie, just talking about waxing lyrical about um, astronomy and um, and yeah, destiny and philosophy and yeah, it's very 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 strange film. So what is it you? Why is that your favorite <laughs> film? Of any film you could pick, how come it's this one? What makes it the special? Well. One? Actually, I'm not sure if it... I think the reason why I chose that film... I mean, I, I love it, but I think it was this, this brief that we were given that we had, we had to write something and couple it with a, with a song. I guess it could have been quite easy to, to couple <laughs> any film with a, with a song because uh, with soundtrack... Actually, this film doesn't have a soundtrack, so it, it didn't seem like a first choice for a film <laughs> to couple with a song. But um, there's, before I was even aware of the film, uh, my, my dad's a big fan of this, this, this singer, singer-songwriter, Rufus Wainwright, a Canadian singer. And he used to play this, this song called Grey Gardens. And... Uh, and that, I guess when once I found out, once I got to know the film through my interests in uh, trying to find out about film history and stuff, and I came across this this strange artifact from the mid seventies, and uh, I connected the two, and I thought oh, it would be quite interesting to talk about that, and and play the track afterwards. And so is the song itself actually about the film, or yeah. is it like as if the song are like the characters in the film? Do you know what I mean? Like, is it talking about... Does that make well, sense? Well, yeah. Well, the song, I guess the song is from the perspective of Little Edie, yeah. who's the kind of central character in mm -hmm. the film, if you could call her a character. It's a documentary, but... Um, and, yeah, so, yeah Rufus wrote about he befriended a cabaret singer in, in the late 90s and uh, he was kind of hanging out in the New York downtown scene and and he got introduced to this this film which was it's a big cult hit especially in the the, the gay scene in the in the 90s the late 90s um, it's kind of the little Edie in, in, herself became like a cabaret singer and was um, kind of part of that scene um, before she died. And uh, yeah, so he, he, yeah, I guess he, he was just at the time of writing the album that this appeared on, he, he was deep in that film. And he, he, he coupled it with this Thomas Mann novella um, Death in Venice, and it kind of drew parallels. He said he was on on uh, a lot of drugs at the time and mm -hmm. was kind of out of his, his head and he was kind of muddling up all of these different influences, uh, different things that he was interested in. And uh, But I think there's a real... There's a lot of thought that has gone into coupling this the narrative this this kind of perspective of, of little Edie the, the central person in the film and uh, the the subject of the novella there's a lot of parallels there which I probably won't go into but <laughs> it's it's like it, yeah I tried to find my original piece that I wrote for the for the radio but it, yeah, yeah it's yeah long gone I think it was over ten years ago. I tried to find out the exact date, but I think it, I think it was probably 2010 mm. um, when I when I wrote it. 
So it's um, so sadly. Has that piece inspired you to write more then since then? Yeah. So yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, I've, I think I've not really written about film before. Before well, then, no. I don't think. As I said, I was writing fiction mm-hmm. mainly. It's and really changed for you then. Yeah, yeah. and I, I, I don't know what compelled me to write a non-fiction piece about a film, but yeah, when this when ch- the chapel opened and people were asking how people wanted to how co- people wanted to contribute to the radio my mind just jumped to to films and um yeah so i think yeah and i've written a lot about film since wow you, yeah, yeah. I'm, you've sold it to me, you know, Mimi. Because <laughs> you've sold it to me very well. Actually, it does sound interesting, and it's not something I would usually think about watching. But it's like it's just like how the it just, it just seemed interesting. And uh, is there um, if, if you were to rate it from one to ten, this uh, documentary, what would you rate? <laughs> well, oh yeah. Well, no, it's, it's yeah. God, I don't really do rate. I you don't, don't like do ratings, ratings actually. No. I don't think. But this is, I'd say, this is a what Going they call. Line. Yeah, I'd say it's a, a, what I call an all timer. Like a, it's 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 a it's a biggie. Good, <laughs> good. And uh, so I'm guessing there's a track you would like to play. Yes, yeah. So this the the tune that I've chosen is uh, it's by Rufus Wainwright, and. Yeah, it's called Grey Gardens. Difficult to keep the line between the past and the present.
I hope you're enjoying an evening's entertainment that only East Leeds FM can provide. My name's Toby, and I'm joined now by Johan. Johan, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. So we're here to talk about... Just, just getting used to the bright lights. We're here to talk about Think Global, Act Local. Now, obviously, one of the big themes in this is activism and protest, particularly around climate change. So I thought I'd go straight off the bat... You've been doing some stuff to do with this in your own life, haven't you? Yeah, I've been taking part in some of the climate protests in Leeds. Tell me about that then. Was this sort of the school strikes or was this, you know, how did you do it? What did you do? Uh, I was taking part in Woodcraft Folk and we were just doing a school strike. Oh, great. So what issues in particular were you trying to raise? Was it climate change or was it a specific thing to do with your community? Uh, we were just like we were walking around and trying to... Like, we were blocking up all the roads so people couldn't drive through, and it was... Did you have massive placards? Uh, yeah, and we were just, like, shouting, like, how it could affect the next generation. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, young people, very often the drivers of this thought, uh, sort of thing. I'll ask you one more thing, which is, how did your friends, people who didn't do it, how did they react to the idea of you doing it? Did, do you think people you know maybe felt more deeply about the issue once they knew you'd done it? What sort of reactions did you get? Um, so when I got like back to school, they were all like, oh, how was, how was it like? And how, what did you do? And it was just like, all the attention was on me. Brilliant. And I, I think uh, always, everyone always wants that, of course. Um, now, I think, I think one of the really interesting things about a show like this is it is something community radio can do really well. Uh, you know, this is about stuff at a macro, at a, at a micro level, but it's also a macro level. It's also global. It's a really big issue. And without further ado, Johan, would you like to introduce the next piece that we're all going to be enjoying, of course? So this is going to be Think Global, Act Local on ELFM. Take it away. Hello, I'm Rachel Unsworth and I'm here to tell you about a brand new programme on East Leeds FM, Think Global, Act Local. A team of concerned citizens in East Leeds has got together to help raise awareness of the impending climate catastrophe and what we can all do on a local and global level to help prevent it. So we asked our team to say in one sentence what we're trying to achieve. Think Global, Act Local. I hope the programme spreads an important message. Make the world a better place. I would like the programme to raise awareness and get everybody passionate about climate change and what they can do about it. I'm hoping that the programme can involve many more people of all generations. Let's make everybody aware how deep this emergency is. Because climate change doesn't just happen to polar bears and in the Amazon, it happens in Leeds. Think global, act local. local. In 2018, at age 15, Swedish student Greta Thunberg started the school strike for climate by spending her school days protesting outside the Swedish parliament. The movement snowballed, and tomorrow, Friday the 24th of September, there'll be the first global climate strike since the start of the pandemic. All around the world, people will strike and hold protests to demand a fair decarbonisation of the economy. Here in Leeds, the Youth for Climate group are holding a wave of change protest in Millennium Square from 3pm. The Leeds climate protests in 2019 prompted Leeds City Council to make a declaration to reach net zero carbon by 2030. We asked two of the young protesters to find out how Leeds was getting on. I'm Cherry Tucker. I started going to the climate strikes in 2019 in February, which I believe was the first strike Leeds ever had. I'm Rosa. I started going to the strikes in around October 2019. I really liked the atmosphere there. I enjoyed feeling a sort of shared anger towards climate change. Youth for Climate in Leeds was born out of a need for someone to organise. Our main goal at the time was to organise strikes until we got what was our first demand, Leeds declaring a climate emergency. And in 2019, that happened. On a positive note, I know that they're trying to pedestrianise the city centre, trying to make them all climate friendly. But with the expansion of Leeds Bradford Airport, there's not a lot of hope that we're going to reach net zero by 2030. 
The question for me is how. And not in a cynical way, not in a how are we ever going to manage that way, but in a practical way. How will we manage it? How will we get there? And I want them to go, we're going to be net zero by 2030 and here's how we're going to do it and here's the deadline for each thing and I want it to be good. So first we asked Kate Locke of Leeds Climate Commission what she thinks of this target and whether we can achieve it in time. The national target is net zero emissions by 2050. So Leeds is one of the cities that's kind of really, really well ahead of many others in its ambition to do this by 2030. The way we've supported the city is by doing the research, basically, to show that, you know, how this could be done. And we have produced a roadmap to show that, you know, it is technically possible, but it's a really, really big job. OK, so it's possible in theory. Are we on track to do it? Basically, to do this, at the rate we're currently consuming um, emissions, we will be through what's called our carbon budget, which is basically, if you look at the whole amount of carbon that the world can produce to stay in line with the target from the Paris Agreement, we've all got a kind of budget for our areas. And so Leeds's budget is 31 million tonnes. We are currently emitting around 4 million tonnes a year. On the basis of that, we'll have used up our carbon budget by 2029. We're only talking about what we call direct emissions. We're not even talking about the other emissions uh, which are based on consumption. You know, things like flying, things like food. We've got a massive way to go. Yeah, on this basis, as I say, we would be through our carbon budget before that target's up. But, I mean, the good news is that there are things we could do, what they call cost-effective options, particularly around housing and and transport. And these things will also not only be, you know, they're cost-effective to do, but they'll make our lives better as well in so many ways. Then there are more ambitious things which we can do, which would be much more expensive to do, but they'd also have many benefits for our health, for equality, uh, for the environment. That reduces the gap a little bit more. It still leaves us with 30% that we've got to close that gap by 2030. And things that we can do around that, around decarbonising our heating and planting trees. I mean, planting lots and lots and lots of trees. The figure we've got in our roadmap is 89 million trees, which even if you planted them all very close together, that would still be over a third of the area of Leeds. So technically it's possible, but it's a huge, huge challenge. And it very much depends on people like yourselves, you know, asking questions and saying, where are we? What can we do? We've got some pointers in in the Leeds Carbon Roadmap. For me, striking was a way of connecting with other like-minded people who were also asking the same questions. People like Professor Paul Chatterton of Leeds University. Two years on, I wonder how he thinks we're doing. Well, I think, I mean, Leeds is getting together a really good plan about how it can, like, respond to the climate emergency and to, and to reduce carbon emissions to, to zero by the 2030s. It's got really good intention, so you could talk to the councillors and the council officers and the business leaders... And and they're like, yeah, yeah, look, we've really got to act. We've really, really got to do this. But when you push them on the detail of like, you know, exactly what are we going to do and how are we going to do it? That's where it gets more tricky. But Paul agrees it is achievable as long as we act fast. There's four big areas we could talk about. Yeah. Some of which we have more or less control over. Right. You know, one of the big ones is how we get around leads. So how we drive around, especially in our cars, got to do that less. One of the things is what we what we eat and shop where, where we, you know, what we buy. Um, the other thing is about our, how we heat our homes. And the other big one is like um, how much we're going to fly in the future. I mean, get this right. So if we leave flying, the, the number of planes taking off from Leeds Bradford Airport to increase, within 10 years, that will account for almost half of all the carbon emissions in the total city of Leeds. So is this going to be a huge, huge impact? Yes, we protested against the expansion of Leeds Bradford Airport. We think it's wrong. How does Paul think we can get councillors to understand this? So here's what we do, right? We all live somewhere. So find out who your three councillors are in your ward and ring them up, knock on their door, email them. So what do you think about this? What are you doing about Lees Bradford Airport? What are you doing about reducing car use? So if we all did that across the city, you find that politicians will act if people pressure them. And that's what we've all got to do now. We've all got to contact our politicians saying we care about this and we want change. For Kate, it's something that we can't leave to the politicians everyone has to act. Generally, in terms of the attitude and the way they're supporting us, the council is doing a really good job. Obviously, they can do a lot more, but the job doesn't just fall to the council. One of the areas that we want to work on is, you know, how can other organisations do more? And also, while we're very much, this isn't about individual action, 
as individuals, we still have to think about what we can do to make a difference. In Seacroft, we started already with a climate hub. And there are some really passionate people involved, like Clary Ramsden, who's got some great plans to make Seacroft a better place to live. The Climate Action Seacroft group is people from the community who are getting together to try and make a really positive impact in Seacroft. The first thing we did, so we came up with a project called Sunflowers for Seacroft. We've done 1,600 packets of seeds. And what's lovely is because we had on the packet about our group's Facebook page, Climate Action Seacroft, people have been posting on there. Me, sunflowers are starting to pop up and it's really exciting. And the sunflowers are just the start. We're looking at working with agencies to provide things like tool and toy libraries and also people libraries. Why don't you borrow a person to find out about their life, their lived experience? We're asking the council to stop mowing certain areas like down North Parkway. One of our members is working really hard to get some wildflowers into Rain Park. So we've got lots of wildflowers for the pollinators. We're also looking at, I know it sounds bonkers, a tea garden where we can grow the herbs that you can actually just pick, put in some water and then you've got a cup of tea. All these little bits add up. It's like the British cycling team a few years ago, they decided to make like a 1% improvement on everything. And those tiny, tiny, even fractions of a percent added up and they ended up with a winning team. We really like Clary's plans. There are ways we can reach carbon zero. What I'd like to say to the councillors is, what's stopping you? You can hear Leeds City Council's response in the first edition of Think Global at Local, where we'll also be talking about upcycling and allotment gardening. Think Global at Local. Friday the 8th of October at 5pm on elfn.co.uk Hi, I'm Ellie and I'm here with Saren. So Saren, how are you? Hi, I'm great, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Um, so today we're going to talk a bit about poetry. Um, yeah, so this is all part of a Good To Go festival from Travel Affair. Um, and Ellie, what do you want to say first about the poetry? So, we'll talk a bit about... So, we're going to be listening in a couple of minutes to Keith and Emily with The Deli. So, The Deli is kind of a collection of poems and spoken word poetry, and each week they've got a different theme. Each month? Each month. <laughs> <laughs> almost fair. Yeah, almost. Um, so, yes, this month's theme is Connections, but first, Ellie, what do you think connections means in poetry to you? Connection, I think, means, well, currently in the pandemic, as we all know, I think it means sharing your thoughts with others through your words on the paper or on the laptop, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. It's kind of spreading all your thoughts and because oh, we've all been in, stuck inside and mental health has been kind of in the, in the limelight at the minute and I think it's all about putting all these tangle of thoughts and craziness on the paper. And what about you? I think it means, like, thinking about other people and think, thinking about what they might go through and then, like, writing that on, on the page. Yeah, so we're going to be listening to Keith and Emily with The Deli. Hello. Um, Saren, you, I, I've seen you on some workshops, and you as well, Ellie, and I think Johan as well, doing some poetry. So we're quite happy that the next generation who will come in and will come in onto the deli in a few... Well, hopefully any time now, because your stuff's pretty strong. Uh, we've got some things, um, and I will just... Before I say uh, anything here with my three poems, which are all about connections, and um, Emily's is as well, um, I've only been on... Um, this deli show since about January 2020. Emily's been on it for how long? About seven years now. About seven years. And Emily knows Sophie, who's also on the deli, don't mm -hmm. you? Good friend of hers. And Sophie was around uh, having dinner with me and our lass a couple of years ago. And we were reading stuff. And she said, why don't you come? So the connection that they made um, indirectly affected me being here so that's quite a big thing in, in and of itself, isn't it? So I indirectly owe you one there. You're welcome. But you won't be getting it. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll just crack on. I've got three short poems here. 
Um, and the first one is, I should maybe have left it till the sport one later because it's about football, but it's about, like most uh, poetry, it's about a bit more than just football. It's about love and loss and grief and friendship and all everything. And that's the great thing about poetry is you can make everything go into a few words and distill it. So <clears throat> this is called Lost Artist in Space. And it goes like this. Friday, 6.46 or thereabouts, amidst the noisome shouts of hurtling men at the football courts, I am pincered. But I look up to see you in space and I pull the right peg to steer a pass, true and firm, which on the turn you gently caress. The striker does the rest. Our thirst for poetic connection now quenched. Your raised fist and awkward sideways thumb. My vision of you fossilised for. I try to catch the air between us and mould it like gum. And now I think, if only I knew someone who could draw. So that's the first one. The second one, slightly darker. There are children in the room, but don't worry, there's nothing really terribly, uh, terribly dodgy about this, but it's slightly, <laughs> slightly dark. But there we are, <laughs> right, so... It's called The Neighbours Have Been Spying On Us. And it goes like this. Don't worry, nothing terrible happens. Don't worry. The neighbours have been spying on us. They stand there bold as muck and brass in their back bedroom window, noses pressed to glass. In our pitch black spare room, we've scrubbed an eye hole in the dust of a corner of a window pane to watch their features frost. At times, they're so damned brazen, they wander round their room and tease us with their doings as we crouch in breathless gloom. So that's that one. Wasn't too too terrible, was it? No, Not it was all right. Bad. No, no, no. I think we're all, we 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 passed the watershed anyway. I think so. <laughs> so this is the final one here before I pass over to Emily. It's called Journey to the Abattoir. And that one goes like this. The abattoir does not open until a late hour. We cross carpets of wildflowers, splashes of blood poppy, cold blue salvia hacking over stone dead walls, splashes of scarlet on each selected rain matted fleece, sashes of crimson on white football shirts. Are you away to the abattoir? I'll see you there slicing our way through the training fields, cleaving at shins, stabbing late winners, carcasses scrubbed clean and clad in new cloth. The doors of the abattoir break their spine. The meat market floor is calling out to us, and in moments, we fill it. So that's that. And Emily, those are all about connections. However, mm -hmm. Your poem, which I know all about because you told me all about it, because I get spoilers, um, is about it, it's taking all those threads and building them into something which I think tells us something about the deli and what we do. And before I hand over to you, I'll just say this, that Katie, who works here downstairs, she said that what she likes about the deli is the way we take a theme, like connections or like lift or weave or mend, and we pull all the threads apart and then we put them all back in and we, we do so much with it. So I think that's what it's all about. Do you think that's what it's all about? Yeah, definitely. Mm. And I think there's a real magic to our show in that we plan, but we don't ever discuss what everyone is going to perform. So on the night, you don't really know what Keith's going to say, what James is going to say. And somehow it just all comes together so beautifully it does with, with i think the word is going to be in there with swagger <laughs> it's the word that we like to use swagger. Uh, and um and the the person that brings it all together is someone called peter spafford he's not here this evening but um he's he's the one that uh, he he guides us through it all and he somehow always comes out 75 minutes yeah it's does it. pretty special that is pretty special <laughs> that's it so look listen out for the word swagger in my poem mm. and here we go Friedrich Nietzsche said, invisible threads are the strongest ties. Poetry on the radio. We perform through the ties of our past, the spoken word, 
magical, immediate, intimate, floating voices connecting to you through an ethereal space. William James said, we are separate on the surface but connected in the deep. Through the deep we give life to heartfelt memories as we sail the waves of time. Voices of all shapes and sizes giving sound to the lost. Press play and give way as the omniscience of our voices fill your soul. After all, Joni said, love is touching souls. We are a merry band, the same but very different. United as we swagger, our rickety boats ever floating. This is our home within a home, connection, all never alone. An ever-present listen, archived in time, one dusty shelf in the British Library, a snapshot of our histories. There is a space for you here. Not just the you you wish or think you could be, but the very bones, the very soul of you. Just as you are, right here, right now, Norman Cook. Let your voice be heard. Welcome and take my hand, come on in. The water is warm or cold, depending on how you like it. Bienvenue, willkommen. Come tip our deli ship merrily and be a part of this family. Together we will rewrite the world. And maybe, just maybe, next month we'll find a new word. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. Next up, very excitingly, we have some brand new ELFM jingles for you. Enjoy. Business, business, business. Everyone's talking about business, but... Do you want to start a business? Are you bored of knitting hats for your cats? We specialise in interests such as... Are you struggling to make a business out of selling snow globes? Well, we have the solution for you. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah, it's really easy. Just listen to the Business Network on ELFM. Business, 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 business. 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 Hey you! Are you looking for all the latest pop music all in one place? Then come vibe with us at Tuesdays at 5pm. The station for teens of all ages. Listen to teen music. In these leads over the past month, there has been sightings of many strange flying creatures. We have Ellie and Johan reporting on some of them. So I'm here in Kipax in Yorkshire to give you some reports of a green flying parsnip. So apparently it's poisonous and it flew out of someone's mutated casserole. And just to warn you, it breaks the windows. And also, there was an orange pom-pom statue. This is a flying statue and it turns into stone when it's annoyed. Johan, what else? There's been sightings of a blue chair fly. Very microscopic. It turns into a chair when it gets frightened. And finally, spotted outside the Chapel FM, a magnificent maroon mirroring magpie is shaped like a mirror and mirrors people's feeling. I would recommend feeling scared. There has also been sightings of a red kite broadcast coming up. Listen to Red Kite on the ELFM player for music interviews, poems and conversations, all by young people for young people. And watch out for the other birds. Hey nerd, what video game are you playing? I'm playing. Yeah, I don't actually care, just do my homework. Hey you, are you a nerd and cool kids force you to do their homework and why you do the cool kids homework? Come and listen to Weller's Nerdy News, first Friday of the month at 4pm. Nerd! Have you ever had thoughts about how cats get cold feet? <coughs> no, not really. Have you ever wanted to change the way you cook your cauliflower? I don't like cauliflower. What about changing the average amount of lost pom-poms without pencils? I really don't care. Then, then what? what? Explain! 
just check out the Vandal Factory on the third Tuesday of every month at 6.15 for actual activism and art. What? The cauliflower! Here at ELFM, we have music, interviews and loads of radio shows. Such as Red Kites, so tune in today. Hey you, yes you. Stop driving now. Listen to Chat at the Chapel. 6.15 every third Friday of the month. Review a film. Share a piece of music. Share your new garden tips. Share your cooking tips. Okay, you can get back to driving now. Welcome back to the big Leeds East, um, <laughs> Leeds East radio broadcast. But before we start, I would like to talk about some of the things going on to do with the Good To Go Festival. So obviously we're here with the big broadcast and tomorrow we have Arts at the Arms or we have Peter Mitchell Photography ex Exhibition on Saturday the September the 25th, so come on down. So I want to talk about the conversation with Melinda and she seems very passionate about uh, being able to meet a friend after a long time. And when I say a long time, I mean a long, long time without seeing each other. And they seem really passionate about being able to do this. And here it is, conversation with Melinda. Melinda, take it away. All right, so Melinda, why don't you reintroduce yourselves to the people who aren't, I guess, too familiar with who you are, like what you've done at Chapel of M and, and yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I'm so excited to be part of the big broadcast 2021. Yeah. Um, uh, when I found out about this opportunity, I was like, yes, I think it's great that, you know, everyone who is sort of a part of the community at Chapel, F at Chapel FM, East Leeds FM, really connects and, and sort of engage with one another, you know. So this is fantastic. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Umlinde Kulashe. I was born and raised in Cape Town, South Africa. I'm a classical ballet dancer by profession, and I absolutely love media, television, the entertainment industry. Who are you, Monique? Your turn. Oh, so <laughs> many, so many ways to answer that question. Well, um, well, firstly, I'm your collaborator and friend at Chapel <laughs> Fan, fellow volunteer. Um, so my name is Monique. For those who maybe haven't seen me around in a while or, or haven't seen me at all. And I actually uh, moved to England. So as you can tell by the accent, um, I moved in 2018, which I'm sure for all of us feels like 10 years ago at this point. <laughs> um, and I do a lot of the Chapel FM stuff. So whether it be uh, usually monitoring the desk for various shows, whether it's the deli or the fun um, event stuff that Chapel FM has put on, like... Uh, Writing on Air, which is coming up soon this October, actually. Don't forget to check it out. Um, or music a thons, or just other stuff, or um, Jane's Franny show, or you know, just other cool stuff that you see. And my show that I started and, and plan on resuming, it's called So You're From. And I think um, as I kind of studied media and everything that entails, uh, I I get to do getting to do this kind of stuff um, has been really fun, and I think with a place like Chapel of Fam, it's it's such a unique little corner where it feels like yeah ah you can't you can't ever really describe it really well because it's not the same as being in person, but it's this fun center of um, writers and poets and musicians and. And it's almost like a fun turnstile of like, oh, who's coming through today and who are we going to get to talk to and who are we going to get to listen to? And, 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 and essentially that's what this show I created, So You're From, is about, where, which is, oh, actually, you know, living in England, you start to realize, actually, it's, it's very, very different. It can be as different two minutes down the road. And um, 
there are there there's uh but it's so colorful and it's it's so much more than what you see on tv and kind of what you read from the books and and i guess that's a huge part of what makes um you live and where you're from uh what it is and when you start to actually get to live there day to day and you get to like pick up on the isms as i like to say you start now saying oh wow like tell me tell me more about that because i'm sure uh we're wherever you call home in one sense maybe it's it's you you have multiple homes and you start picking up things you wouldn't usually say or you start um, noticing like oh we have this too but we call this something else that's slightly different or we have like similar dishes or like oh it's so funny that you say that because that just doesn't sound quite right but and yeah. I, I I love that and um there's nothing like getting to talk to someone about about that kind of stuff and really like, oh, tell me more, tell me more about that. Oh, so no, I was, I was just thinking about the title of your name. So you from, so, you know, yeah. you, you've, ch- you've touched on getting to know people about where they come from and yeah. sort of about the differences from where they come from and where they are in their lives now. Yeah. And I was thinking about your title and my title called Conversations with Lindy. And I find them quite similar because I've listened yeah. to those before and actually I've been in one of your shows. You have. You don't, only, you don't only talk about where people come from, but in fact, you talk about their journeys through life. Yeah. And how they got to where they are in life, but not necessarily in terms of location, but just it could be about career, relationships, and that sort of thing. And I think actually just just listening to other people's stories is yeah. really um it's a it's a great motivator, it's really inspirational because I so my show is called Conversations with Lindy. I yeah. think I've said this about four times now already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have. Tell me and, more. Tell me more. You know, and I I genuinely am interested in people's stories and yeah. finding out about sort of their struggles and how they came out of those struggles. I find mm-hmm. it really inspirational and it kind of it's a it's a big motivator for me. And I think your show kind of captures that as well a little bit. And I love those those similarities. And I think that's why I really connect with you oh absolutely and I think um one of the things I love about whether it was having you on the on the show on my radio show or just having you around as as one of the uh long-term volunteers is just the way we and I guess other people at Chop FM love the idea of not just storytelling but like what can we do with this like how can we have fun with this how can we um um you know, kind of bring other people along and and just have make it a unique experience, which I feel like because it's because not just our two shows and not just us as uh, individuals, but I feel like collectively at Chapel FM, that's kind of what it's about. Like, cool. Like, you don't see this very often. Let's let's give it a spotlight. Let's let's really share it as best as we can. And the like the fact that Chapel FM is this beautiful small place it, the intimacy like feeds into the the bigness that comes through when you're when we're doing something in the upstairs aspect and, and it's live or when you're um when there's like all this fun crazy creative commotion going on and it's <laughs> it's pandemonium but it's pandemonium in the best way which I'm sure as um a dancer you know all about like yeah, oh, yeah. It's pandemonium it's, in the best way, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have it any other way. Like yeah, that's where all totally. the magic happens. Yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah. but also I think you know, I feel like being a part of the Chapel FM family yeah. has sort of encouraged me really to be free with what yeah. I, what I produce, with what I say, with what I share. Yeah. With people. Do you do you find that it's the same for you? Oh, absolutely. I sometimes think, you know, just, just, just be creative and be yourself. Yeah. I, I sometimes find that, um, Capo of M is like this, like it it feel, I don't know if you feel the same way, but I know for me, sometimes it feels like that, that safety bubble that university kind of gives you, but you get to do it as an adult. Yeah. I think for me as well, I love, I love the sort of the diversity of the space and, um, I feel kind of free to share my own creativity at yeah. Chapel FM, um, but also I feel encouraged to do things, you know, yeah. things that I might be too shy or too nervous or too scared to, 
to, yeah. to, to keep on. But I feel really encouraged when I'm with Chapel FM. So I, enc- I, I encourage people to get in touch if they're interested. Oh, absolutely. In podcast or, lo- or learning about radio or learning about the behind the scenes of how to produce. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And it, it's always, I would I, I wonder if you agree with me in that a Chapel FM is kind of always changing a little bit. So it's never going to be exactly the same. But you'll 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 go there one day or one month and you're like, oh, I didn't know you guys do this. I'm like, well, we're just trying it out. We're just gonna see. And and they're not they're not afraid either to like, well, we've never done this exactly, but we're gonna go. We're just gonna go. Yeah, and yeah. um, it it in some ways, I don't know if you feel the same, but I feel like Chapel FM isn't stagnant either. Like they're willing to like go out like, yeah, we're gonna go over here. We're gonna go to this event and this event. We're gonna like collaborate with these people. Um, yeah. but. So I've shared how I came to Chapel FM. How did you first hear about Chapel FM? Like, because I'm sure, like, in on paper, it's like, oh, of course, like, yeah, you, you, you're a dancer, you do something creative. Of course, you'd find your way to Chapel FM. But for people who've kind of just found it, sometimes they're like, I've never even heard of this place. Like, where is it? And so, how did you come across Chapel FM? Well, mine is simple. I want to be a TV presenter and yeah. I was looking for spaces where I could learn how to present. Yeah. And I thought radio was a great starting point because it's less pressure. I don't have to focus on what I look like. Uh, yeah. you know, I'm hidden. There's no cameras looking at me. And so I Googled um, presenter courses, radio presenter courses in Leeds, whatever, whatever. Chapel yeah. was there. I got in touch and I came and then I, 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 for some time, I was sort of helping other people with their own shows. And then mm-hmm. I learned, I learned how to then be a presenter. And, 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 and now I'm doing my own show called Conversation with Lindy and I've had so much fun and I, I, I can't wait to continue that. Um, so for anyone who remembers what it looks like and you come back, uh, it, it is a little bit odd at first, but then you get used to it pretty quickly. And you almost forget, like, like this is how Chapel FM was always meant to be, like. I think we've way past our 10, ten minutes mark now. Oh, yeah. Um, I just want to say to everyone that's listening, if you're listening, um, thank you for checking in and listening to our big yeah. 2021 here at Chapel FM. My name is Mlindi, and I've been chatting with Monique, and um, Hi. I'm sure you'll hear more of us pretty soon. All right, bye, guys. Have fun. Bye. Well, welcome back. And now this is like a section with the whole like sports talk kind of thing. Oh, here's Keith. <laughs> Anyways, so first of the sports talk, I'm going to try and convince Saren um, to like sports and maybe start doing some sports. And then afterwards, we're going to have a little bit of a sports talk with Keith that did the poems and Sam, who introduced the show. So, Saren, why don't you like sport? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you like sport? <laughs> Where to start is the actual question. Um, I'm an injury magnet, so it's really easy just to hurt yourself. Uh, um, and it's just effort. It's just <laughs> <laughs> well, then. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> um, well, then. So, well, you, I heard the story that you may or may not dislocated your knee doing, well, not really doing that ball. <laughs> so, so yeah. It was string a netball drill. Oh, okay. And you just kind of dislocated yeah. your knee. I threw the ball successfully first before I dislocated. <laughs> well, that's one positive. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like that you should get into sport because there's like good sports out there, which I think you might like. Because I've been told that you like your musical theater and you like yes. your dance. Mm. Dance is kind of like a sport because it gets your exercise kind of in and it, you know, whatever. But. You know, I kind of, I do myself some, like, I do netball and I do tennis. So, but I, if, do you like tennis or not? I kind of like watching it. Is you, is it? <laughs> the typical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so, if you think about it, with the exercise and sports, it's been proven, all right, here's my science. Um, <laughs> it's been proven that um, with exercise, it get, like, um, this kind of hormone in your brain, which makes you more, like, happy. If you get what I mean, so like, um, so I've always been told like, if I'm down or whatever, like, oh, go on, do do some exercise, and it actually makes me really happy afterwards. Um, so, and it's kind of a good way to stay fit and like, you know, be, um, you know, as I said, be happy. So, are you more convinced, or do you want to ask me more questions? <laughs> no, I suppose 
No, I might try it. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound very convincing. Yeah, that doesn't sound very convincing, but I'm a go with it. I'm proud of myself. Uh, so, okay, so next we're going to have a sports talk with Keith and Sam. We'll take it away. Yes. Yes, uh, me and Keith are here to represent Sport Talk, a new show on East Leeds FM, just two episodes deep. Uh, the third episode is actually coming in this Good To Go Festival, the final day, I think. Um, we're going to be talking a lot about boxing. I'm not going to be there, but they're going to be talking a lot about boxing. Uh, so, Sport Talk. What do you do on Sport Talk, Keith? Um, I do quite a lot of stuff on <laughs> Sport Talk because... I like sport and I like talking, so <laughs> I, 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 I think I might have found my metier, you know, there. So, um, so Sarah, you said you don't like sport very much, which is fair enough. Not everyone likes everything. Uh, but I think that sports talk is far-reaching, and it goes out to people not just who are into their sport, because obviously you would listen to it, but people who may not think they're sports people. So Emily, who was on here earlier with the deli, um, she was probably quite surprised to find herself on the first sports talk. But she was talking about wild swimming. Now, wild swimming, you're not going to dislocate your knee wild swimming. Are you, Emily? I don't think so. I hope not. I hope not. No, so... Um, and the sport is... There's a lot of things about sport that, that people like, but there's two things that we've covered already. The first one was about well-being, and the second one was about community. Wasn't it, Sam? Do you remember? So the first one... Um, well-being, you mentioned it, Abriel, right? And it's endorphins, I think you're talking about, those little hormones that float about your head and go pop when you do something. In uh, the run-up to that show, there was a long lockdown from New Year's Day, I think, or just before, right up to nearly Easter. And a lot of people were struggling, but I didn't feel like I was struggling, but I actually was towards the end of that. And when I got out to play football again, I was thinking maybe I won't play. I didn't feel great. I didn't feel energetic. I didn't feel I had... But that's because I hadn't been doing anything. I went and played anyway, and afterwards I felt great. I felt so good to be alive. And that is what sport can do to you. So it can also dislocate your knee, unfortunately. <laughs> so that's obviously a, a downside of it. But as long as you don't dislocate your knee, you'll be all right. But the other thing we talked about was community because this is a community, it's community radio, and we're all drawn in from a community, and we think there's a community out there that want to engage with sport, and it's a way for them to, to develop their own sense of community. So we've got lots of different people who may feel excluded, uh, or, they are, or they do lots of sport and want to tell us about it. So we've got all those people coming to us, and Sam will tell it, because you came up to Knaresborough to see some cricket um, stuff, uh, We've gone out to other communities. We've gone over to Lancashire and um, up to North Yorkshire, and we've gone. To, we've we've spoken to people involved in cricket, people locally here in boxing, which will be the next show. Um, we've had all sorts of people. At Knaresborough, we spoke to uh, the chairman, we did. David Alloway. We also spoke to um, a mum who's been over from Ireland four years. Hilary O'Callaghan, her name was. She not only has brought her sons to play cricket, she's learned to play cricket. She's learned to coach cricket. She's talking to us about maybe playing cricket here uh, next year. She's that they're starting a mum's team and all those things. That sort of story, to me, is invaluable. It's gold dust every time. So we've got people like that. We've got the Lads United people, if you listen to the first one we did, which was about well-being. Do you remember that long thing we had with Wayne and he opened up about his, uh, about his son? It was a really tragic thing that he was talking about. That was really, really important. A lot of men, um, especially, uh, don't talk enough about how they feel, and football has been a way during this lockdown for them to do that. So that's really, really important as well. And we think we're enabling that, making connections. We spoke to Tony Mullin from uh, Your Backyard. They're based. At, they're getting people involved in sport all around. So I think we're making all these connections. There's lots of people I haven't mentioned. American footballers will and uh, Steve Smith, who used to teach behind here at East Leeds Academy. And we are slowly building up a portfolio of connections. That's what we're talking about tonight, connections. And we are slowly building that up. And we think that is really, really exciting, don't we, Sam? Yes, you're not wrong, Keith. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, we talk about literally 
every single sport that you can possibly imagine, even ones that you can't really even imagine, wild swimming. Wild swimming. <laughs> basketball. But people know what basketball is. <laughs> 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 but yeah, like lo loads of stuff like rock climbing. Rock climbing. Uh, Keith has me mentioned that to me. Just loads of loads of stuff that you can play from young to old, and that's what's good about sport, in my opinion. Like especially with the community side, uh, you can just play it and play it and play it and play it, and you don't even have to be good. No. As long as you're having fun with it, you can just play it, and yeah. Yeah, I've played cricket for years. I'm rubbish at it, <laughs> but I've, I've played it for, for for many many years, and I love it, and I know a lot of people because of it. So, and that, that helps my well-being, and I think that must be true of pretty much everyone else. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. Yeah. And I think a lot of people forget to do it. And some people are put off, like you've been put off a bit, because you think, oh, it's not really for me. But actually, there, there's something somewhere there for you. You know, like some people think they're maybe not very good at creative stuff. But I think Henry and other people, creative people you know, here, will say there's something for you somewhere. And I think it's the same with sport. Yeah. yeah. Like, same with sport. Like, you don't even have to, like, do a club. You can no. just do it for fun. Like, as yeah. you said, you're just doing, like, the fo you have a kickabout yeah. of football or do, like, a little game of cricket with your mates. Like, it's not a full-on, like, club that you can do because, mm. like, if you're having fun with it, it makes you feel better. Yeah. It's not, like, it's nothing to be forced to do. So, like, Sarah, and I'm not going to force you to do sports. <laughs> so then you don't dislocate your knee again. Um, if you're forcing them, it's no longer sport. <laughs> exactly. So, like, <laughs> if you force them and they're not comfortable with it, then that's not yeah, really no, a no, full-on, like, be, sport. Like, you have, they have anyone. to be comfortable with it. Like, yeah. for example, like, swimming or basketball. Like, it's what their, like, hobby is and what they're, like, made to do. They feel yeah. like they're made to and, do. And not all sports are contact sports. Yeah, so exactly. You're less, less likely to... Like tennis. To, like, like, table like, tennis is a good yeah, one. I play a lot of that. Yeah. I'm rubbish at that, too. Well, I mean, she say not all sports are contact sports she just cleared a knee in netball well yeah but there's, <laughs> that's true that's true you've completely what you've done there is you've taken my theory and blown it out of the water sam i don't oh, like so I hate, you, hate you when you do, I have this every time we're on the show <laughs> well done sam <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't speak don't speak much but when i yeah. do make an impact yeah <laughs> but it's been an exciting summer isn't it it I has mean, yeah. yeah it's just yeah. it's been very um, very interesting for me not like not from like a sports thing but this is the this is the first show that I've properly been involved in with that isn't like mm. a red kite or anything like that, where I've actually like run tech stuff, done stuff mm. like that, and it's been been a good experience for me. I've been able to just run the show, kind and, of, listen, and also listen to you guys just talk about uh, community well-being, yeah, and everything I do as well. I mean, Elliot will tell you I'm much better at talking than tech. Much better. <laughs> I take stuff. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, uh, talking, I can just talk for forever, so that's fine. And I love doing it. But you are going to go to... Uh, you're hoping to go to Salford to study sports journalism. Broadcast yeah. journalism. Sorry? Broadcast, Broadcast journalism. journalism. I beg your pardon, yeah. So, so you'll be... I mean, this is a pathway in, I guess. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, and um, it's given you great experience to be on the show doing all that. I wish I'd done something like that when I was actually learned how to do it properly instead of just prattling on. You know, that would have been much better. So we're really looking forward to that, and we hope you'll come back. You know, oh, hey, hope, we're not, hope, yeah. hope we're not, hope we're good enough for you, you know, <laughs> that, you can, uh, that you can come back and, and you know, we'll develop the next generation of people coming up wanting to do broadcasting. Yes, I, I definitely will. Yeah. And also there's a new sports uh, journalism course at Leeds Beckett. Don't know if anyone knew about that. Oh. I learned about it this summer. And... Uh, Tony and I have been trying to get in touch with them about that, and maybe we'll get some people down here to see what we do as well. Maybe they'll come on the sports show. Yeah. Maybe we'll recruit some people in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, let's let's hope so. Yeah. So I think Brilliant. that I think that rounds us up a little bit. Mm. Uh, before we move on to the feature that we're saying, uh, yep. I'm just going to put a shout out to the uh, community uh, community. The community thing that I've completely forgotten the name of. Uh, <laughs> Where if you guys that are listening here, uh, you play sport or you have like a team uh, and you want to get a shout on the radio, maybe uh, build up some hype for a game at the weekend, uh, tell us and uh, we will we will put you out on the uh, on the radio. Hopefully, you can get some get some uh, interest in your games. Mm. And we've got our community um, notice board as that's well. That's what it's called. Is that what you meant? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that's I didn't realise it was the same thing you were talking about. Yes. So that's <laughs> yeah. So we've got community notice boards on every show, and uh, at the moment we're filling it up with stuff we know about. But we would like the community to come up to us and 
lob their stuff, lob yeah. their stuff into um, the community notice board so that everyone knows what's going on. And people can then, you know, do their social media stuff off the yeah. back of that and it spreads around. So that's a good way of Just getting it building out there. The community. Yeah, but I'm not very good on social media stuff, so. It's a bit fine. old, a bit old. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe it's out there. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, <laughs> that wraps us up then for the sport yeah. talk. We've got a little one minute clip of uh, what we're about. I'm pretty sure it has uh, the voices of Carl and Dan in it who uh, could it's be here with just us. Just Carl, we're talking about, oh, he's talking about Carl. football and there's a bit where I'm talking uh, with the with Wayne at the um, Seacroft Boxing Club. Okay, well let's... Uh, the Working Men's Club. Let's give it a hear then. Yeah. Do you ever, like, sometimes you, you, you sometimes have a kid and you think, do you sort of notice something about him or her, could be? and think that, yeah, that kid's in a bit, a bit of a bad place and I need to put an arm around the shoulder and, and you know, does that often happen or do they tend to come and lose themselves in it? You, you can see when somebody's having a bad day, I know the difference when they walk through. I know when they walk through the door, you know, if someone's not right and wrong, yeah. I'll tell everybody to get on or if it's somebody, I'll say, wait a minute, the rest of you run. If I can help them, I will always help them. That's, that's one thing and then you can, you ask any of my, anybody who's boxed for me or out like that, if I can help you, I'll help you. And that, that's top and bottom of it. It's not just about the football, it's about, you know, making sure your mates are OK, their families are OK, you know, we'll have a barbecue, we'll... It's not just a group, it's not just football, we, you know, we do genuinely try and sort of look out for each other and, and make sure everyone's OK, you know. It, it takes yeah. nothing to pick up a phone and drop somebody a text or give somebody a quick a quick call and just say hello, basically. Can you explain it? Hi, so it's Ellie again, and I'm here with Abril to talk about was it Africa? So this means it's kind of a it's a so it's a place where <laughs> Abril, can you tell yeah. us more? So was it Africa is like to welcome others to vibrate space and celebrate Africa, and it's to welcome and encourage, and it really sounds good. So would you like to explain more about what it's about fully? Uh, so, Waza Africa, it's invite to other people to uh, endorse our music, mm. which uh, maybe you've listened, it's so vibrant, so energetic, so, yeah. yeah. Well, it sounds really good, Renelli, do you have any questions about it? It does, I was just wondering kind of what we can expect, kind of choirs or what kind of genres of music perhaps? Yeah, we've got all the genres, jazz, choir, we've called Statamia, I don't know how we interpret it in English, but we've got various genres, but mm. all of them, you can't, when you listen to that music, you can't sit down. <laughs> <laughs> if you are sitting down, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> that's, that's what you want with a good, yeah. with a good bit of music. Yeah. yeah. When did this all start? So when was this fully like created? Uh, I first um, uh, um, went to find your music, find your frequency, mm. and then they asked me if I could do a program. So uh, look, browsing at all the programs that were uh, in Eastlip FM, I could see that there's something missing. Yeah. So I've added my African bits on there. Yeah. So yeah. It's good to add like different cultures in because yeah. like to so then we can like learn about different diversities exactly. and how they like how what their music is like and how they kind of you know work yeah. things. And with our music, you don't need to understand the lyrics; it's just the beat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's like if you don't know like that, the other language, like you don't have to really understand it. Understand you just it. have to, to enjoy kind of, it. Yeah. It's kind of like with a like a show. If you don't understand it, you'll still get like the memo of the actual show, and yeah. that shows that it's a good show yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Is it like community? Is it kind of all? Uh, is it all around England, or is it kind of like specifically in Leeds or like in Yorkshire? Uh, no, that's what I'm trying to develop mm. because I think that's what is missing. So hopefully through uh, ELFM, I can be able to expand. Yes, well, I hope you can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds very good because I, I love hearing about different cultures because it's because um, you don't really hear that much about like um, cultures nowadays, to be honest with you, like we're trying like it's more now than like kind of like back then, but we're still trying to like move it more forward. 
um, so then we can kind of learn about like different countries, like in different, um, like um, what are they called continents, um, yeah, like yeah. Asia and Africa and all that. And yeah. it's and it's really good that you've like um, started all this. So do you have a piece that you're going to be playing for us? Uh, the first piece that we're going to play it's by a Jovi Youth Choir. It's Shape of You. So it's a Africanized version of Ed Sheeran. All right. Hope you enjoy that. really beautiful song because I'm not too experienced in listening to African music myself but I know the song Shape of You and I think that was the kind of song that just made you want to get up and personally I think that was a better improvement of the song because it had <laughs> lots, and lots, I think lots so too. of different layers to yeah, it. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to ask another question of kind of what are the messages uh, messages do you want to spread to people around around England, around Leeds, about African music and African culture? Um, it's because I know Africa is always demonstrated in a bad light. Mm. So I hope 
by bringing the music and the culture, they see that there's two sides of the story. So I want to bring that, okay, we've got uh, problems like everywhere else, but there's so much good in Africa. Yeah, I think that's important to highlight the fact that it's not just stereotypical, mm. it's like Britain, posh people, tea, America. <laughs> really sugary things and then <laughs> you kind of want to highlight the good things as well in life <laughs> and everything is stereotypical no it's not and yeah. also just kind of what target audience is to and also how can people learn more about the african culture and music uh i mean if music is for everybody so everybody is welcome to listen to music uh, so i think as an African person, I've got a responsibility as well to use this platform to reach out. So I'm hoping with this platform I can be able to do so. Mm. Yeah. Are you like taking, are you like having any, is it like a specific age for like to join and kind of, you know, um, make the, like join the African music and making it, or is it like, is it any age? Anybody. <laughs> but in music is cross-generational, anybody can use enjoy music mm. yeah can anyone in uh, like join as well even if they're not a part of the african culture and like, oh, they yeah. can learn about the african culture oh, then as well of, of course of course because i'm speaking english i have to learn english <laughs> yeah. so that i reach out so if it's through music rather than language that's still acceptable yeah, so can you tell us a little bit more about the song that we're going to hear next? Yeah, this song takes me to 1995 in my home country, South Africa. Uh, it was the end of apartheid era. I don't know if you know apartheid. It was a system where black and white are separate. And mm. uh, when that ended, uh, the, we hosted the World Cup and Nelson Mandela, our president then, was a prominent figure. And the rugby, it was well carved for rugby, and rugby was known as a white man's sport. But on that particular day, everybody came together, and we call ourselves Rainbow Nation. So I could see what unity can do, what it can bring to everybody. So this song, it's very, eh, close to me, and the song is World in Union by Lady Smith, Brett Mambazo, featuring PJ Powers.
Well, that was the song that made it in 1994. And my last song, it takes me back to my home city in KwaZulu Natal. Uh, the song is Wauti Mbeni by Dengani. Enjoy. And welcome back to the big ELFM broadcast. And unfortunately, we have come to the end. All of the oh, show. Oh, come on. And just in Chapel FM fashion, we have overrun. <laughs> so we are going to concisely end it by talking to our next generation broadcasters and giving them just, I don't know, about 30 seconds each. To, Time in you. To... Um, <laughs> give their one takeaway, their one thing that they liked from the show, and we're going to start with Abril. Well, I kind of liked the whole, all of it. <laughs> um, and it was a very good mixture of um, things, kind of, we had a sports talk, we had poems, we had African culture and music, we had a whole mix of things, and I feel like this is kind of maybe one of the best Chapel FM like um, broadcasts we have, because it had a huge um, um, uh, I can't see it, but whatever. Um, but yeah, I think it's been really good. Thank you, Abril. I think we should have like a countdown clock playing just so people don't yeah. run over. But anyway, <laughs> Mimi, <laughs> would you like to go next and tell us what you've enjoyed about tonight? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I definitely agree with Avril. I think this is one of the like uh, best like uh, things that they've broadcasted, and I think it's a nice way to sum up all the shows that are like happening on East Needs FM. I am on the bandwagon here, and <laughs> just to add on to that, I think it's a great way, because I personally didn't know about half of these shows tonight, but I've learned a great deal about a lot of different things, which is always a good thing to take away. Don't know about you. I would, I would agree with that. <laughs> uh, Johan, uh, are you going to join the bandwagon, or are you providing a different intake? Are you, are you, are you seconding, or are you firsting? I'm not really sure at the moment, but I'm just going to say I liked it all, and... <laughs> <laughs> Why was that? Well, like, disappointed. Hand, Yay. So, I just preferred the, uh, uh, what is it, the think, where well, act local, think global, and I preferred it because I have taken part in it, and I already know quite a lot of it. Sarah, how about you? Are you going to lean in? Um... I've just enjoyed everything. It's been amazing. Um, but I think you might convince me about sports. <laughs> Yay! Yay! We've that, done it. That was the only thing that we wanted to do. So now I'm going to ask the special person who is between both yes. groups. Sam, are you going to join the bandwagon? Are you going to tell me what you enjoyed about tonight? Uh, yes, I, uh, I am. I'm going to specially uh, mention 
my show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course, yeah. Bit, bit of a cop out with the sports talk, but I think a special mention to the poetry that was read by Keith and Emily. I thought it was very good. And uh, how about you, James? So for me, um, I, I obviously last minute for me coming in and I was talking to Jake and I, I actually really enjoyed that. I found it very interesting on the different things he's done, writing about films and linking the, the music, the song he chose tonight with it. And just like the film itself makes me want to watch it the way he described it. And I, I really enjoy doing that tonight. And how about you, Toby? I see your one, I raise you two, and I'm going to do it all in under 30 seconds. Watch me do it. So, uh, the clock starts. First thing, the Ed Sheeran cover, um, the sort of African music version, 100% better than the original song. Sorry, Ed Sheeran. Definitely. 100%. Um, and secondly, I thought the, the, the film talk well, thing was really good, mainly because... I think we can all agree. Again, as I said earlier, if you don't like films, you're a bit of a wrong one. You've got to like films. Come on. Ten seconds. I was about to say that, actually. Then, yeah, you, you were running out of time here. You got anything else to say in the last two seconds? Last two seconds? Climate change. That's quite important. Listen to that. <laughs> well. And what a way to end it. <laughs> so That's this has important. been the ELFM Big Broadcast kicking off the Good To Go Festival. Uh, I've been told to let everyone know that, f that Saturday is the day that you guys need to be coming down the because everything, everything happens on Saturday. They're whispering in his be ear. Be there or be square. And, and come on the 9th of October for Sports Talk. Yes. Uh, <laughs> thank you, everyone, and uh, we will hopefully be seeing a lot of you guys over the next three weeks in the Good To Go Festival. Thank you. Thank you. Music. Reviews. Chat. Poems. Comedy. Writing. Interviews. Yeah,